Elta Company presents Diet Challenge is a one-of-a-kind project, the nine participants of which were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. They have no right to forget. They have no right to not know. We test the sugar before mealtime. It's been an hour, test it. It's been two, test it. And if I say so, you test it in three or four hours, or even in the middle of the night. Three, two, let's go. It is a six-month transformation process. Come on, Dasha. Regular workouts, controlling sugars and emotions, daily activity reports, discipline. Discipline, that is what I'm lacking. You're all different. Real success, real stories. For the longest time, I thought of myself as a broken machine, the type that needs to be scrapped. Reality project about the lives of people with diabetes. Every day is a new step towards self-change, towards controlling your diabetes. We challenged ourselves, have you? Last week's discussion was on the first achievements of the participants. Scores were based on the participants' attitude, responsibility factor and the quality of their homework assignments as well as their compliance with expert recommendations. As the organizer of this project, it's very important to me that each one of them achieves a result. For them to get from point A to point B, for them to transform. The rules are still the same. The first three months are under the supervision of an endocrinologist, a psychologist and a trainer. Get lower. Drop the weight and continue without it. You do it five more times. Straighten your back, get lower. Stage 2. Three months of independent work without the experts. At the end of each stage, the participants with the best results on the way to their set goals will win a money prize. Do I see myself winning? I'm a winner in general. Everybody who made it on the show is a winner. Today is the fourth group meeting and there are news. Firstly, Nyura Sharikova has joined the project. This whole time I was in Vietnam. Now I'm here with you. I feel good and comfortable. However, I was very worried that I would be a newbie on the team. And I would feel weird and uncomfortable. But no, there's nothing like that. It's awesome here. Secondly, a change in the rules of today's meeting. Aside from their responsibility, goal orientation and endurance traits, the Diet Challenge participants will show off their creative side this time. Sorry, what's Dasha doing? She's reading a poem. Polka dot underwear, yeah? No, what about polka dot underwear? I can do that too, it doesn't matter. Okay, do the polka dot underwear. Diet Talents is the symbolic name of the upcoming concert. Nasta Martinuk will run the show, replacing the project's host, Dmitry Grinevich, for the time being. Wow, that's unexpected. Tell me, please, today is a bit of a shock for many of the participants. Many of them don't know what to do. Some feel that they're not creative, some just don't want to do certain things. So you're not going to go? Yes, you will. What are you afraid of? Come on. I'm not afraid. I am one of those people that will not perform or show anything. I don't completely understand what we need to do. It doesn't matter, just watch. Like this. One, two, one, two, one, two. It's easy. Eventually, with group efforts, the issue of the acts was sorted. Diet Talent Show will include dancing, singing, poetry, magic and even the making of a diet cake. Cheesecake! Hey, Veronika! Tell us about it! Veronika gave us the cheesecake's recipe and told us many, many more things. Veronika Gergebiani is 26, married, physics major, specializes in nanosystems and nanotechnology. Curiosity to understand how the world works is in Veronika's blood. My grandfather, grandmother and father are all physicists, although my grandpa didn't want me to go into physics, since it's known to be more of a man's subject. By the time Veronika graduated from Moscow State University, she has already written five papers. 
She held over 20 conferences, including overseas, and patented her own invention. She had a bright future in science, but the dream of teaching was stronger. Veronika loves the children's never-ending whys. Why does the teapot steam? Why does lightning strike? It's cool and interesting when you know the answer, and you can explain to somebody why the sky is blue. Sometimes they ask me about my pump or my glucose meter, when they see me testing my sugar. The kids become very interested, asking, what is that? How does it work? Can you test me with it? I say, okay, are you ready to get your finger pricked? No, 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 thanks. Veronika has lived with diabetes for 12 years, enough time to learn to control the disease, especially for a physicist, calculate everything correctly. It's not that simple. At one time I thought I knew everything and I would test my sugar once every two or three days and I thought I was sure I could feel my condition, meaning I can feel when my sugar is rising and when it drops. I did my glycated hemoglobin test every three months and it was always quite good. Tell me, who pointed you towards glycated hemoglobin? Nobody, I just know that since the early 2000s, everyone knows that glycated hemoglobin means nothing. It can also be good, even if there are spikes from the lowest to the highest, the average glycated hemoglobin won't be bad. If you have spikes between 2 and 20, absolutely. That's why I'm very skeptic of glycated hemoglobin. Do any of you know what your hemoglobin is? Has it ever been low? Do you mean regular hemoglobin? Yes, regular hemoglobin. Has anyone had a low hemoglobin before? I can't honestly remember. Give or take, it's on the low spectrum in all of us, including me. And the glycated type, when you already have low hemoglobin, how can you ever rely on it? When I switched to the pump in September, I began to test my sugar about 12 times a day, every hour, and I discovered that I don't know my body at all. I realized that everything was not as good as I have thought for the past 10 years. And now I had to rethink and recalculate everything, all my coefficients and dosing. She understands some things in theory. She has tried them, but not everything is working for her. Veronika's pump is set up in a certain way, delivering a different dose every hour. That's why we decided to eat less, fewer times a day, so it would be easier to orient ourselves and know what to do with our basal rate. She's that sponge that absorbs everything. I think that by the end of the project, she will show great results. I began to look at food completely differently. I was always taught that I don't need to take insulin for proteins, such as chicken or meat, but it turned out that I would eat a piece of salami and my sugar would shoot up. And not right away, but like six hours later. Here I did a 2.5, I extended two units for five hours due to a chicken kebab. I almost got everything right, yes, and added 6.8. This was the only time, because I extended it when I had a dang hamburger. Well, a hamburger and a chicken kebab are a bit different. Anastasia is a beautiful and a stylish woman. She's glowing. She sets up such a collaboration that it feels less doctor-patient, but more natural human-like. Hello, Dasha, come in. Hello. I liked when she said that she was going to guide and supervise me, and that I will have to follow her recommendations. But that does not mean that I have to forget about my endocrinologist that I'm currently seeing. That says a lot about a person. Today is a day of revelations, my dear friends. And as usual, Dmitri, and I truly believe that he didn't do it out of spite, and not even to challenge me. But in the morning, I accidentally saw Dmitri taking a short dose, an ultra-short acting dose. Where, Dmitri? My arm. And now let us figure out what is happening with Dmitri's morning sugars. Dmitri, let's write down your level this morning. What happens in an hour or two, your numbers in general, what you eat. And do this every day. If we look at Dmitri's diary, in the afternoon and evening everything is normal. But the morning is a confusing time. I wouldn't say that they're all that high, but a digit here, two there, I would like them to be lower. He's nearly perfect. He's close to perfection if he wasn't so stubborn. How many times did you go into hypo in order to understand what goes on at night? Because we don't wake up at night and as a result in the morning we have high blood sugar. 
and nobody could understand. Well, there were random guesses, and until we got ourselves in a not-so-nice of a situation, we finally realized that it's probably a good idea to check sugar at night, to understand what's what. And what was the result? How much did we cut the evening-long acting insulin dose by? It was at 14, but it's at 11 now. It's at 11 now, three units, just like that. No, sorry. When I came on the project, I had 16 in the evening. Good that you came. Where are you sugars at now when you wake up? Well, he continues his stubbornness. He still won't check his sugars at night. It's 6.4, uh, 6.1. But with such a normal morning sugar level, and then about two hours later, where's the sugar at? Two hours after what? After breakfast. Could be 7.9, sometimes 8.4. Read out all the notes from this week. This week, uh, let's see, 8.4, 7.9, 6.8, 12.6, 6.8. I didn't mark today's. So what do you make of this? You're all practically doctors by now. What do you make of it? It's okay, and two hours later, it's a normal reading. Olya, I don't get it. Why are you sticking up for everybody today? I just don't see anything wrong with it, if it's two hours later. No, let's not do it this way. Give Olya your diary. My diary is perfect. Sometimes you brush your teeth longer. Sometimes you inject into the arm. Sometimes in the stomach. We have two problems. First, we're not keeping a pause in the morning. Second, I just saw it now. If I had not seen it, I would still not know what was happening. I knew about the pause. So we will probably... I would like to assign a supervisor to Dmitri. We get what the 12.6 problem was. With the 7 sugar reading, Dmitri had tea with honey and a sandwich. Honey slips through occasionally. There was also sugar. What was the amount of sugar before? Two spoons. But tea with honey? Honey tea won't work with your glucose at 7. And secondly, there is no pause yet again. Do you understand? Let's do this instead. Dmitri promises us that he will set an alarm clock tonight for 3 a.m. I already did it twice. We need one more. You see, we lowered it and there is still confusion. It's best to do it at 3 and 5. Or six. Hold on, he will not feel good at work then. Let's just keep it at 3 a.m. for now. Well, he's a softy, that's just how he is. Don't touch the stomach. Men are very sensitive. So 3 a.m. So you check it at 3 a.m. today, and it wouldn't hurt to do it at 5 or 6 a.m. Dmitri, keeping your promise to everyone that you will do it. Finally, keeping the pause. Not a problem. Sure it is. How many weeks have I been asking about this? Today is the first time I'm hearing about the pause. Are you kidding me? Before today, you were talking about the pause and I... No, think about it. So you bite down on a sandwich and it's already in your system and the insulin... It will take time to reach the stomach. No, you absorb it as it hits your mouth. Forget the sandwich. What about the tea with honey? You absorb it once it hits your mouth. Insulin needs to get into the blood through the fat. It won't get there. The doctors have always told us that ultra-short insulin can be done after food, and it is best after food. You can do it after food only in one instance, if you have low sugar at the time. So you eat and then inject. They used to say one thing, now another. Okay, here's what Dmitri did before. Dmitri would go without pauses, and instead of honey, would use sugar which is even worse. Respectively, after two hours, his sugar would spike, and after three to four hours, a hypoglycemia episode. Do you inject insulin when it rises? Of course! You didn't know it would drop later? No, nobody told me. Today, Dmitri promised everybody that his sugars will not go above 7.5 this week. Dima, after two hours. I never promised, but I will keep a pause. Up to 5.5, six tops in the morning. You can do it. I will keep a pause. You are doing very well. If you keep these pauses, if we understand what to do about basal insulin, it will be perfect. For that, you will have to do the test that I talked about. You'll continue to calculate everything. You're doing much better now. We had another issue. How much short insulin would you do for your meals? 
Yes, I've had those. An eight unit dose. You would do it for everything. Doesn't matter whether it was tea, a sandwich, pork, anything and everything. I guess I can be a bit strict. I've heard it from many of my colleagues and from my patients. And not just on this project. Well, it's not possible to do it any other way. Precision is very important here. And they really have to get that we're not here to be your friend. We're here to accomplish our set goals. What stands in my way? It's that I see my goal, I move towards it, but then I stop. Veronika came on diet challenge with three specific goals in mind. And didn't expect to get so close to one of them so soon. To lose so much weight. I was told that when you're losing weight, you have to eat a ton of protein. Protein for dinner, protein before bed, and that protein should be your diet's main ingredient. It was an eye-opener after our wonderful experts Alexey and Anastasia told me that in reality, if a woman wants to drop weight, carbs should make up half of her diet. She does as she is told. Otherwise, why would she even go there? She's very into it. She might not always agree with the experts, but as she tells me, she went on to get some advice and not to be a smart aleck, to hear them out and to try stuff. Because if she would do as she saw fit, she could have done without the project and wouldn't need to suffer as she does now. Just a couple of weeks ago, workouts were a real torture for Veronika. There's progress here as well. She went from simple strolls and walks up the stairs to training in the gym based on the schedule put together by Diet Challenge's trainer. I'm done with weight training for today. Time to check my sugar. I check my sugar every 15 minutes during training. It can change dramatically. I may have a spike or it may drop, and I have to stay on top of it. For instance, blood sugar often rises during weight training and drops during cardio. But it's not 100%. That's why you need to know your individual needs. Right now, my sugar is 8.2. It's a perfect score after weight training, because you should start your workout with a reading of a 7 or 8, so you don't fall into hypo during your first 15-20 minutes. Veronika's other goal is to rid herself of her food addiction and the fear of motherhood. I had this feeling since I was a child, yeah? That I could not forgive myself if my child had diabetes. Oh, somebody's grouchy. What's the matter? Olya Shukina's daughter is the same age as Diet Challenge. Alesa was born not long before Project's first group meeting. She and her father let mom get back to the show right away. Looking at her, you think, what is there to be afraid of? She's a wonderful woman, she lives her life with confidence and everything is okay. Everything is happening in her life as it should, and that's great. And the baby, it's wonderful, she has no worries. Everything just works out as it does, I guess, naturally and with ease. Tell us, what happened this week? It feels like I began to understand myself better. Many angles opened to me that I didn't even think of. The most interesting thing, when I was talking with Vasily today, I realized that what I discovered last week is like I didn't discover anything at all. In reality, it's much deeper than that. I just want to learn and read and complete assignments. Vasily also assigns homework, so I'll show my responsible side here as well. Veronika, what was the homework that Vasily assigned to you for next week? Dmitri, I'm not going to say. No jokes. The problem with uh, Vasily's talks is that I never think that the exercise that Vasily assigns me affects the things that it does. The way he works, like, the first thing he'll say is, how can I help you? So I begin to tell him everything that is happening with me. He patiently listens and then gives me an assignment that has nothing to do with. And I say, hold on, Vasily, here are my issues. And he says, yes, I got it. And that is what we'll do. So I come back in a week and he asks me if there are any changes. The bad news is that this exercise did not work. No changes. And he says, any other news? So I say, okay, so I'm not as hungry as I used to be. And he says, well, then the exercise did work. Just for fun, 
Go ahead and growl and bark at everybody here for the next 15-20 minutes. He gave me an assignment to watch people. So, say I see a person and I need to imagine how I could surprise them. Just a complete stranger that I might meet on the street, on a bus or anywhere. I say, Vasily, what can we do to make me care less about what people think of me? So he tells me to close my eyes and to think of a very pleasant memory. And pay attention to your body. Do you feel a tickle, tension or maybe relaxation? And I'm thinking to myself, Vasily, how is this going to help me with caring about what people think of me? Are you going to tell me how? So he says, keep going. These exercises didn't always come easy, and he knew about it. He would say, this and that will distract you. And then I realized that I feel more energy just because I stopped thinking about it. However, some echoes of Olga's previous state returned to her before today's concert. At first, it felt like this was some summer camp, especially at the very beginning when we were coming up with our acts, and then a feeling of, what a fail. Out of all the possible emotions that the participants could feel during the rehearsal, embarrassment was the strongest. And then Vasily came to the rescue. This exercise has to do with the rhythm of all neuropsychic processes. It has an activating, rhythmic, integrative effect. It's quite good for collecting all of your resources in order to utilize them after. Very soon, now actually, it's time to get ready. It's called the cockroach. The cockroach has four legs. The cockroach has four arms. And he dances and laughs and lives a happy life. How are you feeling? Better. Great. Pumped. Hypo, anybody? Hypo. Hypo. Okay, shall we go? You heard belly dancing and thought that I'd be ringing with coins and show off my belly. But no. First, I'll find the proper rhyme, and then we'll let you taste my pie. Cake! Yeah! It has carrot in it, banana, and egg, and a whole bunch of vitamins. Every calorie has been counted. If I was a bit braver, I would totally do the belly dance. And when we ended up, when everything was over, I realized that it's not some summer camp and that the people are all grown up. I had an amazing feeling. These guys are great. They're all great. This is Diet Challenge. See you in a week.